Ready to call your next witness? Okay. You may want to raise your right hand and be sworn. Do you solemnly swear or affirm to tell the whole truth and nothing but the truth to the best of your knowledge? I do. Be seated. My name is Charlie Kelly. I'm a lawyer and I'm a lawyer. Please state your full name for the record. How are you? Very nice. Yes, I'm MJ Electric. I'm employed by MJ Electric. Um, two months. When did you start? March 3rd. What's your job at MJ Electric? Uh, I'm a superintendent. What's that mean? Um, I guess that uh, I'm in charge of the manpower at the project. And what project? Uh, right now I'm working on the Nelson Energy Center. Where's that? It's Rock Falls, Illinois. Uh, and when you say you're in charge of the manpower, uh, what are your duties and responsibilities in connection with that job? Um, day to day activities of, uh, you know, uh, making sure the men are doing what they're supposed to be doing, they have the rules of information. The activities of the job site. Um, and what are you trained to do? I'm sorry, what am I trained to do? Yeah. Do you uh, have any particular uh, expertise? Your journeyman or something else? What okay. you describe that to the court so we have some sense? Yeah, I went through uh, an apprenticeship through Local 697. Uh, when I finished that, I became a journey environment. I also have gone through and uh, taken certain classes through the uh, apprenticeship school to uh, uh, learn and, and uh, perform instrumentation, which is a specialty of trade. Um, and that, that's about it as far as formal training. And with respect to Sergeant Electric, you worked for Sergeant, correct? Right? I did, yes. And you worked for Sergeant for the six years preceding uh, your current position at MJ Electric, right? Correct. And you worked on the VP project, right? Correct. And you were a uh, superintendent or foreman, I think you described it, correct? Yeah, and in, in, uh, in every foreman, superintendent, project manager was all kind of the same thing to me at that job. And uh, in that job, were you overseeing uh, manpower up as well? Uh, I was more doing the uh, overall management of the uh, of of the project. I had uh, people under me that kind of dealt with the manpower directly. And can you describe for the court what was the project at the The project I specifically uh, worked on uh, was called the OSBL. O S P L, correct. 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 What's that stand for? Outside battery limits. And how long did you work on the O S B L project? Uh, it was pretty much the duration from day one. I came there and started working under Dennis Hathaway, and then uh, as the project grew, uh, we split off, and I kind of took over the O S B L work. Uh, so for six years? No. How many years? The last two. Last two. Uh, you also uh, helped clean up um, or finish off the WRMP project, right? Yes. So after the OSBL uh, work was completed, they created a uh, closeout team that was really kind of like a punch list of miscellaneous items that needed to be completed, and I kind of helped uh, head that up for uh, the electrician scope of that work. It, it involved all crafts. Um, and while and you worked on that for how long? That kind of started, I guess, at the end of the, of the, the major project work was done while the other units came online. So that might have been fall, late fall, early winter of 2013. Uh, and you worked uh, at BP uh, consistently day after day for the last few years, correct? Correct. 
Right. And uh, where was the uh, BP facility that you worked at? So the BP facilities in the White Indiana? Did you work there? Yes. Uh, yes. Yeah. The actual the, the actual plant? Yes. Yes, in White Indiana. Uh, and you also had a trailer, right? Correct. Um, and where was the trailer? Sorry, an electric trailer located? The trailer is at a uh, compound for Arsenal Middle. And it's one of the um, sections in this compound, and then sections of that soft section. So we have about four or five trailers in there. Sorry, the electric had four or five trailers? Correct. It, as a result of the amount of work that was going on, the need to house men there, correct? Um, what, just there was one post office people. Uh, when we started, it was manpower, but then that got moved into the refinery. Um, and the trailer you were in included you, Mr. Simmons, Jim Simmons, and Doug Hansen, correct? Correct. Now, uh, at a uh, certain point, uh, and I think it was on February 10th, uh, on February 10th, around lunchtime, uh, Mr. Frame came to see you, right? He came to the trailer, yes. Uh, and uh, at that point, Mr. Frame uh, said to you that he was leaving to join MJ Electric, correct? Um, he came to say goodbye, but he was leaving after he sent out an email earlier that uh, morning and he came by to uh, say goodbye, shake hands. And he told you he was going to MJ Electric, right? Yes. Uh, and uh, he told you how to get in touch with him there, right? Uh, he uh, advised you what his email address was uh, and uh, you quickly inserted it into your phone, correct? Correct. Uh, and if we uh, look real quick at an exhibit, Okay. Your Honor, may I approach the witness and yes. describe our process? Uh, Mr. Schumann, I'm going to show you a couple of documents today. Uh, they have been placed in exhibit binders that we've been using for the last three days. Uh, there's an indication of what the exhibits are on the front page. Uh, here it says hearing exhibits 1 through 90. I'm going to start out the day by showing you exhibit 90. But thereafter, I'm going to show you uh, a couple of exhibits in a hearing binder that has 91 through 130. I'll put it there for your ease and convenience when we arrive at it. Okay? Understood. Now, I believe in the binder that you have before you right now, we need the last exhibit in the binder. Our 90 is the great fact, last page. Which exhibit was that again, Council? Uh, Your Honor, Exhibit 90. Okay. And it would be the last in the book that has uh, 51 through 90. Sergeant Electric, and as you just said, you put your hat in the ring for that job, right? Correct. 
Um, and you mentioned the word or the name, uh, Marilyn Fett. Marilyn Fett was the office manager at Sergeant, correct? At that time, in February? I don't know what her title was, actually. Uh, well, uh, I mean, she was the... What did you understand her to be? She was uh, the uh, second place, I don't know. It, in the email that they sent out, it said required in Maryland or North Carolina. So, in the email that Sergeant sent out uh, saying if you want to apply for these field operations jobs, to apply to Maryland or uh, apply to Mark Guest, the president of the company, right? Correct. And that's what you did, right? Correct. Um, and uh, as of um, February 10th, uh, you did not regularly visit the MJ website, right? No. Uh, as of February 10th, you didn't have it printed out on your desk, correct? Correct. You didn't have any special apps on your phone to make sure that any time a job posting happened to pop up at MJ Electric, you've got notice of it, correct? Correct. Uh, and uh, prior to uh, February 10th, uh, you weren't considering looking for a job at MJ Electric, correct? Correct. Uh, and uh, then uh, at some point, uh, you did decide that you were going to apply for a job at MJ Electric, right? Yes. Uh, and uh, you applied for a job uh, on or about February 14th? It was that week, yeah. It was somewhere around the time, yeah. Uh, just uh, four days after uh, Mr. Frank happened to stop at the Arcelor Middle trailer, correct? Yes. And if you uh, look for a second, now we're going to start to change the binder. Uh, we no longer want uh, 51 through 90. Instead, we're going to move into a binder, uh, which is 91 through 130. Uh, 
the, uh, if you look at Exhibit 92, uh, this is a sequence of emails, Mr. Schumann. Uh, these extend over three pages. The first email that we see uh, on the top of this exhibit is from you to Mr. Crane, to the copy of Mr. Gloss. Uh, in the uh, date here is Tuesday, February 18th, 2014, right? Yes. Uh, and uh, during the course uh, of uh, that day, uh, you're actually uh, talking about uh, certain job benefits that you're going to receive, right? Uh, you were told by no later than February 18th you were going to get a $700 uh, bonus, right? Um, I actually don't recall in, these, in this conversation about the same bonus. I think I found out about that later. Did you find out about it one day later on February 19th? I don't recall that I found out about it. Uh, but it's certainly somewhere in the span between February 17th uh, and February 20th, correct? Uh, the union you were going to get a $7,500 bonus, right? Yes. And a Dodge truck, right? Yes. And guaranteed 40, right? Yes. And holiday pay, right? Yes. And vacation pay, right? Yes. Uh, and as to all those, uh, you uh, had one reaction, right? And it's right here at the top of uh, Exhibit 92. Awesome, right? Yes. And that's what you told Mr. Frank and Mr. Boss. Awesome, right? Yes. Uh, and uh, you had a formal job offer uh, from... Uh, MJ Electric by February 20th, right? Uh, uh, I can't remember the exact, the exact date of when the... Well, I'll help you uh, just to move this along. Keith, uh, there's another binder. Your Honor, may I approach? Yes, yes. Well, Sir Paul, can you... Uh, You'll get it for which one are you? Helping us? Uh, the binder now will be 1 through 50. Mm -hmm.
I'm going to talk to you, I'm going to interview you, something, but I got nothing. Like and you were among that group, right? I felt I was, yes. Right. Uh, and you didn't bother uh, to uh, ask Marilyn or Mr. Gess or anybody else uh, where that field operations uh, process stood, correct? I took, a, I took it as a no response as they were in the industry. But can you listen to my question, uh, if you would. Uh, did you ask anybody at Sergeant where that field operations position interview process stood? And if we go back for a second to uh, exhibit uh, 92, And 
It's also true, is it not, uh, that uh, when you left Sergeant, uh, you didn't hand anybody at Sergeant any USB devices, right? Correct. Uh, and it's also right, uh, is it not, that, that uh, MJ has never asked you to search for any USB devices, correct? Through the course of the litigation, you know, since we were asked to look for some devices that came up in the, in the expert report, I guess. Well, uh, didn't you tell me uh, that uh, nobody at MJ had asked you uh, to look for USB devices? Nobody from MJ had, no. Um, and uh, isn't it also true uh, that uh, you told me at your deposition you didn't have any USB devices, right? Right, and I have any. Uh, no USB devices in your possession. From prior? When you, from the time you worked at Sergeant and left, is it your testimony that you never left with any USB devices that were plugged into your laptop at Sergeant? Not that I know of. No. You left with two, didn't you? Uh, well, your expert report says, does it not, uh, that, uh, and by this I mean, uh, are you aware that the um, MJ expert, Mr. Weil, uh, did a comparison of USB devices that you plugged in at Sergeant uh, with uh, USB devices plugged in at MJ Electric and that there have been two hits? Okay, yes. Um, and those two hits uh, include a, a USB 2.0 flash disk USB device, correct? That's what the report said, yes. Uh, and a Seagate device, correct? Yes. Um, and the Seagate device uh, that was uh, connected uh, was uh, one that uh, we talked about in your deposition, correct? That's my hard drive, yes. Right, your external hard drive, right? Yes. Right. Um, and uh, let's take a quick look uh, at Exhibit 101 uh, to see some of the activities that are going on on your uh, computer just before you were leaving. <laughs> Right. Your Honor, do you have one more? Uh, here, uh, I'm going to be referring uh, now to certain attachments, Mr. Schumann, that, that are part of this Reclamer report. And what, Your Honor, may I refer to it? Yes, Mr. Schumann. What we've done to try to make this a little bit easier for witnesses as they go back and forth, uh, the tabs in the record here report that are of interest uh, to us are going to be H as in Harry and R as in Rams. Actually, I can Device transcend uh, that 
was plugged in as early as November 8, 2013. Do you see that? And if you look for a second with me, I'm sorry that we have to hop around here a little bit, but we're looking at sort of connecting dots between reports. If you look at Exhibit 69, which is the Weill report, so 69 is actually going to be a different binder. And if you turn to Exhibit 69, there, if your expert, or MJ's expert, I'm sorry, has a sequence of appendices, and I wanted you to turn for a second to Appendix A as an apple. And if you look with me, first in Attachment H, where we've seen that USB 2.0 flange disk USB device transcend, and then there's a device serial number, 2012, I won't go through the entire number, but it ends 706, ampersand 0. And if you look at your expert's report, he's put this together, so names of individuals and their laptops show up. So if you go out close to the end of the Appendix A, you see your name, Paul Schumann Laptop? I do. And then if you go down that column, your expert has put a highlighted gray streak through a USB device that you plugged into your MJ laptop on April 8, 2014. Do you see that? Yes. And that reflects back USB 2.0 flash disk USB device, right? Yes. Does that help refresh your recollection for this court that you took a Sergeant Electric device with you and plugged it in at MJ Electric? I don't recall that device. Is your expert wrong? I don't know. I just don't recall using that device. And as a matter of fact, that day, in that time frame, I did get a virus on my MJ computer, and it did a lot to it, so I don't recall using it. And with respect to Attachment R, if you go there for a second, I want to bring your attention to just two things. One, at Attachment R, there's page 106. Yes. Do you see that? If you look down, there are a number of items. On Item 6, there is a reference to user Paul Schumann as Sergeant Word documents, and it shows that on February 14, 2014, you were opening and looking at your resume from Sergeant, correct? Correct. Do you have a problem with that? I don't recall for sure, but I mean, if it's there, I would open it up. Yeah. And I don't recall February 14, because that's the day you were applying for a job at MJ. Do you remember looking up your resume and considering it as you proceeded to apply for a job at MJ Electric? Yes. And I opened it up and submitted it to the application. So here, this would be an accurate reflection of what was occurring on your computer, right, as far as you know? As far as I know. That's something you did, right? Yes. And then if you turn to page 3 of 6, and here I want to move from Word documents to Excel. And here, if you look in Excel, which starts about mid-page, the heading that would reflect the beginning of Excel is Software, Microsoft, Office, 14.0, Excel, File, MRU. Do you see that? Yes. And look at item 4, please. 
see that. Yeah. Item four says uh, that you're in your computer, uh, you're looking at your um, contacts, correct? Correct. Uh, and as we discussed, uh, you copy uh, your uh, contacts onto a uh, Seagate device, right? Yeah, my personal hard drive. Yes. Um, and you define personal, right? Uh, as uh, it's personal if you buy, if you actually pay for the USB device uh, or the uh, external hard drive, right? Is that how you define personal? Um, I, I guess. And uh, you also define as personal all the sergeant electric information that ends up on any external hard drive that you copy? Do you think sergeant information that is moved from the sergeant electric system onto a hard drive that you buy becomes your information at that instant that it goes from sergeant's system to your quote personal end quote hard drive? Uh, no. It remains sergeant's information, correct? Yes. Now, uh, with respect to uh, that hard drive, uh, you told me uh, that, that you downloaded your contacts onto that hard drive, right? Yes. Your contacts included uh, all your contacts that you had over the years at BP, right? Yes. And any other customer that you worked on while at Sergeant, correct? Yes. Um, you also told me, correct, that what you were uh, doing here was uh, you were also doing your daily activity list from BP. That was something that reflected uh, what you had been doing while you were working at BP, right? Are you referring to my daily work, my work list, my daily work list? Yes. Did and, and you tell me you copied that onto this CK device? Yes. And you told me you more than just a BP work that I did, personal, like a digital diary of what goes on. Right, but it was BP work related, right? No. In addition to other information, your daily list of activities. Should we look at your definition? We can, I can read it. You want me to read it? Do you recall putting BP on that device? I think the might have some BP information on me, yes. Um, and uh, because you worked for BP for two years, right? Yes. And one of the things that you're concerned about, uh, one of the good things about having an external hard drive, right, is, is that um, if there was going to be any chance uh, that your computer wasn't working quite right, uh, you were able to back up your backup, meaning you were able to push onto that device uh, the information you had on your laptop, right? Yeah, so what, I use that as a backup. I backed up my files at Sergeant quite a few times because I've gone through a couple of different computers, so I try to back it up every now and again, and that's miscellaneous information, personal stuff. Right. And, and you backed up um, on February 25th, correct? Uh, you backed up your backup, meaning you copied your files from your laptop onto your Seagate hard drive, correct? Yeah. Uh, and with respect to uh, backing up your back, backup and copying all your files onto the uh, hard drive, uh, the first spot for that hard drive to go uh, wasn't actually the MJ. You took that home, right? It's on my, it's on the hard drive. I mean, yeah. So your, with me. so your external hard drive first you took home, right? Then it backed up all your files at Sergeant, including your contacts, right? At home. Didn't you tell me that the first thing you did with that external hard drive was take it home? Uh, And it's correct, is it not, that that Seagate device with all those files from Sergeant were, that Seagate device was plugged in to the system at MJ Electric on March 3rd, correct? And you did that at MJ on your first full day at work at MJ, correct? Possibly, yeah. And you plug that into the MJ system, correct? On my laptop. Yes. Yeah. Uh, that external hard drive, right? Yes. Um, and to 
Did you ask anybody at Sargent whether you had information to back up your backup and take it to MJ Electric? Honestly, I didn't think I was backing up a bunch of Sargent information. It was really just my personal stuff. My work list at B2105 and then music. And you never turned that device over to Sargent for an analysis, correct? No. You never considered turning that over to Sargent for an analysis to see what's on that, correct? I would be more than willing to give whatever they want off of that. I have no need for it. I don't use it. I don't look at it. And I'd be more than willing, if you had a way, I'll give it back or whatever. No doubt. And with respect to your need for it and what you might use that for with the Sargent files on it, with respect to your current position, you're not working for BP, right? Correct. There's no current BP work going on that you're working on, right? Right. And you're not working with respect to any other customer that's being worked on at Sargent at this stage, right? Correct. But are you aware that there are efforts underway right now for MJ Electric to qualify to direct bid with BP? I'm not really in that circle. You're not in that circle. You don't know what Mr. Ross and Mr. Crane are doing right now with respect to BP, right? No, I left. I went right to the job site. All right. Those are my questions. Okay. Cross-examination. Morning, Mr. Chairman. Morning. Before you buy, I'm going to have to take a few minutes. I want to talk a little bit about your background, Mr. Schuman. I just want to have you elaborate on a few things. Good. Mr. Schuman, are you a member of a union? Yeah, IBW Local 697. And how long have you been a member of the IBW Local 697? I've been an associate for actually 14 years. And could you tell me where you worked before you started working at Sargent? This last time before I went to Sargent, I was working for the Roo and then Mead Electric. And how long did you work at Mead Electric? I might have been there two or three years. And what positions did you hold at Mead Electric? I was there as an instrument tech and an instrument tech foreman. And what customers did you work for while you were at Mead Electric? We were at BP. Were you at BP the entire three or four years? Yes. And is Mead Electric a competitor of Sargent Electric? I believe so, yes. And while you were working at Mead, did you acquire knowledge, experience, and relationships with BP contacts? Yeah, I mean, we did several turnarounds, a couple projects, so we got to know a lot of people there. And when you came to work at Sargent, did you bring that knowledge, experience, and BP customer contacts with you? I did. Mr. Schuman, can you tell me how you came to be employed at Sargent Electric in 2007, briefly? Sure. I was working for the Blue Ridge Fine, and then Mr. Frank called me and said he had a chance for me to go to a job. And, you know, I've always enjoyed working for Tom, so I said, sure. And I left the Blue Ridge and went to Sargent in Indianapolis, Powell and Light. And you had previously worked at Sargent in prior years, right? Yes, I worked for Sargent when I was in Price, and then I worked for Sargent again out of Gettysburg, Pennsylvania. I got laid off, and then I came back as a journeyman for Sargent again. It must have been 
before I went to meet, and then I left Sergeant and went to meet. Okay. And so this last time that you came back to work with Sergeant, I think we're talking about in the 2007 time frame. Did, uh, did Sergeant offer you uh, any sort of enticement to come back and work with Sergeant? Yeah, he offered me, a, you know, the guaranteed 40, a truck, to drive home, and um, maybe some vacation time. Okay, and so now you're working at Sergeant. Um, and did you maintain the uh, guaranteed 40 benefit for the duration of your uh, most recent stint as Sergeant? Yes. Uh, do you recall any, any change in that policy uh, in the fall of 2013? Yes, there was an email saying that uh, we would be taking removed certain parts. Uh, when you came to work at Sergeant Electric, did you sign an employment agreement? No. You, is your uh, work term subject to the collective bargaining agreement? Yes. Um, and are you subject to any non-compete or non-solicitation agreement uh, with Sergeant Electric? No. You had testified that um, Mr. Frame was one of your bosses and sort of the hierarchy of things. How would you just describe your relationship with Mr. Frank? Um, he's been a friend and a, and a good mentor, basically. Uh, he's given me every opportunity I've ever had to succeed, so he's really uh, a really good, good guy. Um, now, I want to sort of flash forward to the uh, um, February of this year. Um, could you describe how you learned that um, um, Mr. Frame was leaving Sergeant Fletcher? Yeah, he sent out an email like that morning and, uh, saying that he was leaving and he was pretty bored, everybody. Are we talking about the morning of February 10th? Yeah. And how about Mr. Voss? Uh, when and how do you remember hearing about him leaving uh, Sergeant Fletcher? I don't really recall exactly how I learned it. Uh, I mean, uh, you know, this was really great by some sport. I mean, it was pretty shocking to me both of them. So. Did, was that before or after you heard about Mr. Frank? So before you received that email on the morning of February 10th, did you know that Mr. Frank had any intention of leaving Sergeant? No. Where were you when you uh, received that uh, email from Mr. Frank? I was in the trailer with uh, Jim and Doug. And who, who are Jim and Doug in their last name? I'm sorry, Jim Simmons and Doug Anthony. How did they uh, react to uh, the news? Um, we were shocked. I mean, Jim just kind of sat in front of me in a different office and he rolled the chair around and said, you read your email? I said, no. I read it. You, you spoke briefly about uh, Mr. Frank coming to visit you in the, in the trailer that shortly thereafter that day. Could you just describe in your own words what, what happened? Yeah, again, we were shocked to see him. He showed up and uh, said, hey, guys, uh, you know, uh, want to say goodbye, shake our hands, uh, gave us some contact information, pretty much... Uh, how long was he there? Uh, and at that time, did Mr. Frame say anything to you about coming to work at MJ Electric? No. We want to turn just quickly to uh, Exhibit uh, 90. Uh, you'll, you'll recall, um, you, you don't need to turn to it actually, but I'll, I'll describe it to you. This was the um, hello email. The hello and subject line. Could you just explain that and make sure that we all understand? What, why would you why did you send that hello? Uh, basically, I was just sending it to him to say hello. Uh, you know, that I got his information. Here's my name for God. It's really easy to I typed it in real quick, sent it off, so I had it. Okay. Um, Mr. Kelly asked you some questions about. Um, applying for a job uh, with MJ Electric. Can you just describe um, how you went about doing that? 
Yeah, I mean, I've, I've seen and been around MJ a couple different projects while I was sitting there starting. I was still out of the Chesley, and then they were definitely out of the Morgan County with the Virginia project that I was on. So I had been to their website before, and um, every time I was going there, I said, I better check out, see what's going on with MJ, and saw the employee or the opportunity tab or whatever it was. And, I mean, I didn't think there was so much going on that time that I didn't think applying that occurs. I've applied a lot of jobs over my time, uh, you know, so uh, I just wanted to make sure that um, I was covering all my bases, really. And uh, do you recall, um, you mentioned uh, that you had a phone interview. For, for a job with MJ Electric, do you recall that? Yes. Um, could you just describe who was on that call and what was discussed? Uh, I believe it was uh, Tom and Jim, boss, Tom and Jim, boss, Marty C. Kinnan, um, Bill Maggie, and Corey Borkman. And it was uh, kind of an open conversation about my experience, what I've been doing the last couple of years. If I had any expectations, I guess, and uh, you know, a basic question answer type situation. And uh, did you talk about the Nelson project? It did come up, yes. They, they said there's uh, actually two opportunities one to go to Jersey, one to go to Nelson. Um, did you accept the, the an offer on the spot on that phone call? No. Um, with the Nelson project, let's, let's talk about that a little bit. Um, where's that project located? Rock Falls, Illinois. And who is the customer on that project? They're called End of Energy. I N V D R N G Y. I N V Energy. Yes. And is In Energy a customer that you worked for while you were at Sergeant? No. So you, you testified that you threw your hat in the ring for the field operations manager. Could you just describe sort of the process that you undertook to um, apply to that team? Uh, sure. There was an uh, email sent out by Maryland to whoever, there was a mass email, I suppose, and uh, they took it back to Maryland with Mark and they replied back to Maryland saying that I throw my hat in the ring. And that's about all I know about it. Were you seriously interested in that position? I was. If, if Mr. Guest had contacted you sometime before you went to work with MJ, would you have pursued that opportunity? Like you said, I was keeping all my options open. So. Um, there's been some, uh, some reference to the, the Nelson Project. Um, what is it about the, uh, the, the Nelson Project that featured? Um, I I like the larger projects. Uh, so this project isn't overly large, but it's not small. And so, and I like uh, traveling. So, two were a pretty good combination for me. And uh, did those types of big project and travel opportunities exist at Sergeant in February this year? No. Not that I know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, Mr. Schumann, I'd like you to take a look at uh, probably exhibit 92. This time you're going to actually look at it. First exhibit in a particular binder. Okay. So this is the email exchange about some of the uh, features of the position that we're going into. Um, I guess I guess that's, that's sort of the first question. You know, why didn't you accept the offer on the spot when you heard about this big job opportunity, travel opportunity, the Nelson project? 
Well, there were some particulars about the condition of employment that I didn't know or didn't come up in the interview as far as pay, you know, parent 240, you know, vehicles. So I was getting reaching out to Tom and answer some of those questions. These are things that you were interested in in having? Yes. Um, now I want to point you to uh, the first page of Exhibit 92. <coughs> at the bottom of the page, you send an email on Tuesday, February 18th at 2.20 to Mr. Boss, CC, and Mr. Frame. And you say, I hate to be a bother, but I have circumstances that will require me to have some means of transportation when I give up my truck. You see that? Yes. Can you just explain what you meant by that? Um, basically, I wouldn't have any means of transportation once I give up sorry to be a cold stone. I couldn't have stuck in the middle of the car. You need to truck to get from point A to point B? Right. Now, um, you testified, Mr. Kelly asked you about your formal offer letter dated February 20th, and you pointed out that you didn't see it um, until February 24th, right? Correct. And um, that's the date you signed that letter, right? Yes. Do you recall a meeting uh, with uh, certain MJ representatives prior to signing that letter? Yes. Could you describe sort of uh, where, um, what that meeting was and what took, what took place? We met uh, in the evening at the Bunny and Powell's in Crown Point and uh, discussed with uh, the MJ representatives, you know, their thoughts and their, their uh, goals and commitment to the MJ office. Do you remember who attended that meeting? It was um, Tom Frame, Jim Boss, Jim Manis, Jim Simmons. I think Kate Cadella was there. And Tony Brackwell and Marty Cooper. Um, let's talk about when you decided to uh, to leave Sergeant. I think you mentioned that you uh, uh, took with you your personal hard drive. Um, do you recall taking anything else with you? No. Um, now you mentioned that you had downloaded your uh, your contacts under that personal hard drive. Do you recall downloading anything else on that personal hard drive? Uh, as you were yeah, there might have been some music pictures, some Dr. Slane documents. Um, can you just, um, you mentioned that this document is called Daily Work List. Yes. Can you just describe that, that uh, what that is um, for the court? Um, yeah, when I, when I created it five, six years ago, it was like a to-do list of uh, general Okay, what I want to do today, you know, uh, paint the fence, call the doctor, whatever. Uh, and the sense has evolved into more of a, like a digital diary of my daily activity. So, you know, uh, stand the fence, super cool, like the girl, that running, what time did I make, you know, just, just a general quick view of my day. Just so, have a record of it really right, but I think I think you said that there is some BP info on there. Can you explain what you mean or how you use this document sort of in the course of, of your work? What do, you, what do you mean by that? Yeah, so during during the course of my work, my day, I might include some information about what happened during the day at the job site. So there could be information about BP in there. So it was just, uh, just like a daily recollection. I don't do it daily, I'm sad to say, sometimes it's good day. Right. Now, so, going back to sort of the, the, the day you left, did you download um, any information that you would consider to be sergeant information? Not that I recall. Okay. <laughs> Did you uh, 
print any sergeant documents and take them take them with you? No. Now, in terms of uh, MJ's uh, investigation, or asking about USB USB devices, do you recall talking to MJ's attorneys about USB devices? Yes. You're currently working on that Nelson project in Rock, Rock Falls, right? Yes. Are you using any sergeant, in, sergeant information in the course of your work at uh, MJ Electric? No. You've been working on that Nelson project throughout the duration of your employment at MJ, right? Yeah, I mean, basically, I went to that job site so I could learn how MJ does things. So, I mean, they kind of might. I title of superintendent, but really I'm just kind of learning their system and how to do things and the NJ, what are you doing? Things. I'm in the process of learning. And are you doing anything that you would consider interfering with projects that Sergeant uh, had before you left? No. Sergeant's expert report refers to a number of USB devices that were attached into your Sergeant computer, and Mr. Kelly showed you um, that list on the attachment, or which one, but do you have any of those USB devices? No. I do want to ask you about one of the devices on here. Do you recall one of the devices being your MP3 player? Yes. Yes. Yes, I'm going to go. Okay. You want to redirect? Okay. Now, uh, Mr. Schumann, uh, real quickly, uh, when uh, you moved from uh, Meade to Sargent, uh, Meade was already a competitor of Sargent in the northwest Indiana uh, heavy industrial sector, right? Do you have any doubt that me and Sergeant uh, were competitors uh, in this heavy industrial sector with steel and petrochemical at the time you moved from me to Sergeant? Yes. That's correct, was it not? Or is it not? That I know that they were competitors? Yes. Yes. Um, at the time uh, you moved from Sergeant to MJ, MJ was not doing steel or petrochemical work in this market, right? I, I don't know. Are you aware of that? Were you competing with MJ uh, in this market uh, the six years when you worked for Sargent? In those six years, I wasn't privy to every project that was going on out there. No, I don't, I don't know. I wasn't really. So involved. you don't have an idea. Uh, as far as you know, MJ was not a competitor in this market with steel and petrochemical for the six years you worked at Sargent, right? Objection. That's the answer, Your Honor. All right. You can answer if you know. Oh, go ahead and answer. Yes, they were. I don't, I don't know for sure. Uh, and uh, when you came, Sergeant, did you come with a team for me? From Sergeant to me? When I went left Sergeant to me? What's the question? Uh, I, I thought you were saying you went from me to Sergeant at some point. Did I, mis did I misinterpret that? I went from the room to Sergeant. Okay. But yes, in essence, for me, yeah. I was only able to do for like a month. Okay. And uh, did you bring a team with you from me uh, to Sergeant? No. Uh, did you meet with the Executive Vice President of Sergeant uh, and some team before you came to Sergeant? I did talk to uh, uh, Gary Groom on the phone. Okay. 
Uh, and anything else besides that? No. Uh, and with respect to, um, there was a reference again to your uh, contacts, uh, and uh, I just want to confirm I understand the sequence here. So if we turn back to Exhibit 101 and Attachment R, please. <coughs> Okay. And if you look at page three of six, okay. And in particular, uh, move to item number four, please. Uh, item four there, uh, which was the day you plugged in your Seagate device into the Sergeant Electric laptop, it shows that this occurred on February twenty fifth. 2014, right? Yes. One day after you signed uh, your acceptance letter with MJ Electric, right? Yes. And three days before you notified the sergeant you were going to quit and leave to join MJ, right? Yes. And with respect to um, big projects for a second, um, Arsenal Middle. Uh, is a customer of Sargent's, correct? Yes. Uh, Arsenal Middle is the largest steel producing company in the world right now, correct? Okay, I'm not aware of it, yes. But uh, they're not a customer of MG Electric right now in the Northwest Indiana market, right? I'm not sure if they are not. The same question with USS. You don't, you don't know uh, whether or not USS uh, is the largest domestic steel maker in the United States of America. Is that right? You say they are. And they're a customer of Sargent's, right? Not at MJ's, right? They are a customer of Sargent. Um, so as it relates to big projects and big customers, um, those are about as big as they get, right, Mr. They're big companies, not big projects. Uh, and with respect to um, the files, we go back to your files for a second. Um, when you put your files uh, on the USB, uh, Device. I think you described to me uh, that a technique that's used and you have used uh, is to copy and drag, which means you don't have to open a file. You can just look at it and drag that file from the laptop onto the USB device, right? Yes. Um, and that was a common way in which you copy documents, correct? Yes. Uh, for your entire period of time at Sergeant Electric, correct? And one of the ways you were copying documents from uh, your uh, uh, sergeant laptop onto your uh, Seagate device on February 25th, correct? Yes. And uh, one last question. Um, I think you mentioned that you were a member of uh, local union 697, right? Yes. Uh, uh, is there anything uh, that you know of uh, from local 697 that gives you the right to take confidential sergeant information on a USB device when you leave one employer to go to the next. No. That's all I have, John. Okay, can you read cross? Briefly. Mr. Schumann, when you were applying with MJ, did the um, the fact that other folks were applying back then to your decision. Yeah, I mean, sometimes when, you know, people leave, it starts creating a domino effect, so they don't want to be the last one standing. If there was something going on, they wanted to see what was going on. That being said, would you, would you still have come to work at MJ um, by yourself if no one else had left? With regard to that personal hard drive, um, you mentioned you downloaded your contacts onto the personal hard drive before you left. The point about the system, and that you uploaded those onto your MJ system, right? Yes. Yes. Have you uploaded any other information other than pictures, personal stuff? Other than the day of the workplace and 
Right. No. Now, you mentioned the daily work list. There's also a document called, you know the document called Sunday 8-2105? Yes. What is that document? That's uh, basically since 8-2105, I try to once a week type like a, a letter to my daughters picture of what we did that week or whatever, so kind of like a timeline of their life, hopefully. I don't do it every week, unfortunately. So in addition to not downloading any, any other information from the personal hard drive, did you share that personal hard drive with anyone else that you left it? No. No further questions, right? No questions, Ryan? Thank you, sir. You may step up. Thank you. Next witness ready? Yes. Sure.